We are now recording, and are we posting okay. it to YouTube right now, or are we posting it later? Let's, let's post it later. Okay. <laughs> All right, so we'll call this meeting to order. Um, Greg, the roll call. Sharon's present, Matthew's present, Chris is absent, and Lindsay and I are attending. Agreed, agreed. I do see there is an adjustment, or I got that email from you, Craig, that there's an adjustment to the agenda. Yes, we wanted to do an, a, GSB up, to... a GSB update from Sharon. Okay, when do you want to do that? Can we I... wait till yeah. the end, just because Lindsay's gonna sneak out of here at 2.55. I think we'll okay. be done, but I just wanna make sure. Especially if it's just the four of us. Um... But I think to, today what we wanted to do is primarily review your budget and get that approved so we can get it to Hank for the end of the month. I mean, we're, I think that was the request to get it to them in February. That would be good. And I think it's an easy one. It's going down and it's pretty straightforward. Mm -hmm. um, we do need to approve the minutes for the last meeting, which yep. was November 9th, November 30th, I think it was. And it was I, Sharon, and, Sharon and Krista. Mm -hmm. And and actually, they were November thirty mi minutes. It was my mistake here. Right. Linda corrected me. Yes, it is the November thirtieth meeting. Um, so I would move to approve the minutes of the November meeting. Well, I'll second it. That's good. <laughs> <laughs> and I guess I'll. Uh, any discussion? Any changes to them? I think they're right, fine. Hearing none, then. Nope, they're fine. Okay. So I approve two to zero. Thank you. So, Matthew, I've put the, the next meeting would be to be determined because typically, um, once we've done the budget, we, unless something comes up, we don't have a, another meeting, but something may come up and we can, we can do a monthly meeting whenever we need to. But, this won't okay. be scheduled yet. All right, I think we should have one before the end of the year. That's all I would that's, say. That's Just fine, a, absolutely. Sort of our, a May meeting, if nothing else. Sure, okay. So, Just so we can all touch base before going into the summer. Good idea. And, and, and we should have more information about how the town meeting is going to proceed and all of that. Okay. Um, I don't know if that AOS 93 update was left on there from the last meeting or if there yeah, is an AOS. Um, um, it didn't get updated. It's the next meeting is March 9th. Right. Um, but I would, you know, just in terms of the AOS 93 update, um, continue, <clears throat> continuing discussion of the interlocal agreement. Hopefully it's going to come to us for the very last time next meeting, Craig. Um, Actually. Or the um, meeting after, a couple meetings, I guess. Actually, I went to um, Drum and Woodson. If you remember, um, Josh had asked if we could do an approval at each of the local right. um, school board minute meetings. Um, Drum and Woodson said, you know, your agreement doesn't allow that right now. You could put that in your agreement, but it would have to be a change going forward. And he said, you know, what it, what it appears to be, though, is it seems to be an attempt to take away some of the voice or the input from the towns if you move it to the to the individual boards so he advised against it um i think it's a conversation we can have at the aos so for this time we would need to come together as we did for the um for the budget in december what i'd said to josh and to i to stephanie and i think that i included you matt was um we'll just wait until we get a We'll wait until the weather clears and we can do an outside meeting and do and do a, um, a bigger, a regular meeting, but we'll do it outside. The, the interlocal agreement doesn't make any substantive or operational changes. There's new, no, no new members being added. Nobody's leaving the AOS. So um, we've updated it and there's, there's just no rush for the approval. Sounds good. The other thing the AOS is uh, uh, working on is the superintendent's Evaluation, Lindsay, uh, last report, I think what we had 11 in or before there you sent the reminder. When I eight. contacted okay. you, I think you're up to about 15 now. Oh, good. So that reminder helped. Yes. Um, as we get to maybe the 
26th. You want to just send out one more, Lindsay, just a, a, you know, last call so we can get, oh, who's here? <laughs> Hi. Hi. How are you? I am, How are you? I am fine. I just, just got back from an ultrasound that went well. So I'm still here, but um, things are, things are good and things are fine. And good, good call, Matthew on, you know, I agree with both you and Sharon on the importance <laughs> of just enjoying walks right now. It's beautiful. Yeah. Out, so. yeah. Good, good. good. I'm nice in a better see. headspace than I have been. <laughs> Great. Okay. Great. Well, you're not in control of this one, Krista. <laughs> no. Nope. Good little sleeper, apparently. That's great. Good well, mover, glad, too. Glad you're here. Yeah. Hopefully, yeah, a nice to... hopefully a sleeper once the baby's born, too. <laughs> apparently, there's a better chance of that if they're, you know, late, so. Um, oh, my God. I, yeah. saw my, I saw my new granddaughter yesterday. It's only, a, I'm sidetracking, but I'm proud. Uh, <laughs> it's only the third time I've seen her since she was born in September because of COVID. Uh -huh. She's like the most peaceful thing. I've never heard a baby not cry. Wow. <laughs> she doesn't cry. She just sits there. She smiles. Oh, it <laughs> makes me, it makes me, <laughs> well, <laughs> not going to happen. So. It's easy when you're a grandparent, you can give them back. <laughs> exactly. Oh, such joy though. I can't wait, Krista, to hear your news. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Thank you all. All right. Yeah. But yes, so I'm all here right. for now. Um, so uh, Krista, if you haven't done your superintendent update, we hope you can get that worked in. It takes 10 or 15 minutes before you have a baby. Good, <laughs> good exercise. <laughs> All right. Um, so I guess this probably brings us right to Lindsay and the main purpose of the meeting, which is the budget. Okay, so I have it up on my screen. I can share the screen if you want. Um, I know you probably all have a paper copy. If somebody watches the meeting back, it's nice to have it on the screen so they see what we're talking about. I think that'd um, be great. Okay, I will do that. You should be able to see it. I made it as big as I can on the screen. Okay. <laughs> And um, of course, what everybody wants to know right away is did it go up or down and what the increase or the percentage is going to be. So I'll just scroll to page two and show you this budget is actually down 16.19%. Um, the secondary budget is down 16.19%. Um, if we go through the lines, I always try not to scroll too fast so it doesn't give people motion sickness. <laughs> Um, we do have from the ED279 what your local uh, required share is, the 369.58.61 right here, and the state subsidy is $34,582.80. The local additional share that I put in was simply the remaining balance. Should you choose to have a fund balance forward, the local additional would go down by that amount. I put it, the number in there so you can see what it is without any other adjustments and the budget would be balanced. Because that would be the state, I mean, the, the town, that 102. Yeah. If you do $0 forward as a fund beginning balance. Okay. And I do have the audit and the numbers here. Um, yeah, I have that too. Okay, so like I don't, we can talk about that after okay. if you I'd want. I'd like to, yes. All right, so the regular instruction line, your tuition obviously is the bulk of your entire budget and your public tuition numbers went down by um, a couple, by three students and your private in-state tuition went down by three students. So we have a loss of six students. We did verify the graduating class is a class of 12 and the incoming class is, has eight. So that accounts for four of the reduction right there. And you have two students who have moved out this year. Um, they do, you do have a contingency here, the $36,000 that would cover three students moving in. So lines five and six and seven are students we know about. Line eight is your cushion of three if um, families are moving in that do have high school age kids. And you can see all together that is a reduction of $72,500. Any questions on that section? Lindsay, what's the, do you have the total number of students um, for private in front of you? No, but I can do the math. Oh, that, that's okay. No, that's fine. That's fine. <laughs> it's about 32 or so, I would guess. Maybe fewer. Uh, let's see. 
29. 29, thank you. You're welcome. And don't forget, there is one in the public, so accounting yep. for 30 total. Okay. In the special uh, education instruction article, you can see that that's down simply because some of the students that um, access services before are the ones that are graduating or have moved. So the numbers going in, we've accounted for any student that we know of that has special services with the additional tuition payment for that. Um, SHREP program fee, you'll continue to have that. That's your participation in the high school alt ed, um, alt -ed placement program. Um, not Lincoln Academy's alt ed, but a, a special education placement program. Uh, special services admin cost is your share of the central office services for special ed. And online subscriptions services is the software we use to manage the um, case managers and the IEPs and all of the data we need with that. Um, can hold on just Lindsay. Sure. That, uh, sorry, um, line 12. Why, mm -hmm. has that, why has that gone down so significantly? Because it, is that the, based on the number of special ed students? It is not. That is um, in last year, or in this year's budget, you had both the special ed director and an assistant director. Okay. And then All we right. did not hire that position. We took it out for next year. Okay. So it's a staffing issue. Yes. Yeah. And that, so that line is entirely about um, special ed here at central office. Okay. The administrative cost. The Thank special. Sure. The special services, psychology, speech, OT, and PT, the last four of that section are um, contracted service amounts. So the providers that go into the high schools, we are still responsible. If a student has an IEP and calls for those services, we pay for that service to happen for them, of course. And those are numbers I worked with Kelly Stokes, the special ed director, to confirm service amounts and anticipated um, costs there. So those numbers should be they're based off what we believe will be um, who will be there for next year. So um, the reduction in psych services based on somebody graduating or leaving who's had significant support? That, yes. Well, the psych services is the triennial evaluations every three year when you have to do the full um, battery of evaluations to determine eligibility again, plus any other testing that may happen um, if a student presents with a new need and the team decides that they want to do an evaluation to see if they need PT, OT, or speech, or any other um, service. So in the past, we had one psych psychologist who covered K-12, and that has become a little bit unreasonable um, to manage the number of students across all of the schools. Now the psychological services provider we have covers K-8, and we contract for the high school amount, so it's a little bit different. Um, it's not a cost share of an employee. It's okay. a amount based off how much evaluation time we think you'll need for students in your town. So some of that money might be shifted over to the Lincoln budget then? Yes. Are the, yeah, is this what Lincoln Academy has, they've billed us for these services? That's separate, well. The Lincoln Academy, that's line 10. That's the Lincoln Academy billing us for special education okay. services. These services down here, it, get, it comes directly to us. It doesn't go to Lincoln and then to, um, to us, it comes directly to our central office. So we actually are responsible for finding the person to do that if we didn't have somebody and saying, please go to Lincoln Academy and provide this, this service or this evaluation. It sounds like a more cost-effective way to be using psychological services for evaluation. Is that true? Or I suppose if you have someone on staff, it's cost effective, but I, I think it's more reasonable and yes, cost effective in the long run. I mean, you're, we're looking at budgeting for who you actually are going to need services for, not just a, a flat percent. Right. Mm -hmm. okay. So that article is down 26%, 25.98. Whoops, I scrolled the wrong way. <laughs> um, CTE instruction at the top of page two, that's a placeholder. Um, if a student goes to Lincoln Academy, they access the CTE, the vocational instruction at Bath first. However, if Bath doesn't offer a program that um, they do over at the Midcoast School of Technology, then we pay for a student to go over there. So they can access the program that they want um, 
if it's not available at the first center. We put $200 in here to make sure that we have that article open in case somebody goes, we can transfer money in and pay it. Um, if we left it blank, we'd be stuck if somebody ended up going there and we couldn't, we'd have to go to get a town vote to open the article. Okay. So you don't want to do that. But this would, and remind me if it's five or 10 or 15% that we've decided that it can be moved between budget lines. I know that we've voted. It's 5% by statute authority. If you if you voted beyond that, I might have to go back in the minutes and see because I wasn't present um, for it. And I wouldn't do it without your asking me to, to do that anyway. But you vote every year. So it may be that you'll ask for an additional 5%, giving you a 10% authority in the future. I think yeah, I think that has been helpful, especially we did for something like this. Yep. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, student and staff support is a central office cost. That is your cost share for um, the position, the curriculum administration, curriculum instruction and assessment director. That's up just because we don't know yet. Um, her salary is partially funded by grants, partially by us. We're not sure exactly how much we get with the grants. So we budget to make sure we can cover what we um, need to. And then generally that will come in a little lower than we than we budgeted for each year. So that's a share based off the cost sharing formula. System administration, those are your school board fees plus the remainder of your central office costs um, for Craig's office, the superintendent's office and for the fiscal services office. Those numbers are up slightly um, partially. Overall, the central office budget went down because special ed went down, the others stayed the same or went up a little bit. These went up because we're switching to a cloud-based server, which has an initial um, upfront cost that will then, we won't have that cost every year afterwards, um, plus some other changes in the office uh, for things we needed. So that that article, the rest of your fees, your liability insurance, I have the document stating what it will be. So I made that number accurate um, at the 400. And the other ones I kept just about the same, just to make sure I looked at a three year history, see what you'd spent and um, kept it about the same because that covered your costs. And transportation. Last year, you were um, in the middle of having transportation bid out. So the number was ballpark what you thought it might be. Um, this year, I actually have a five-year contract in front of me. So I know what you'll be billed for transportation next year. I believe yours came in about uh, 24,997. So I rounded up to 25,000 for a nice clean budgeting number. And vocational transportation, that's the cost for students to go to Bath or to Midcoast. And again, I looked at a three-year history of what you've spent. If you have a student who just started, I know they're gonna go the next three, you know, couple of years. So that cost should cover, um, based historically, should be enough to cover your vocational costs, which leaves you with a 16.19% reduction or 96,000. Wow, Lindsay, thank you. That's I really great. appreciated yeah. that explanation too. Yeah. What a great well, job. Yes. Lots of research and thank you so much. You're welcome. So now we have to go back to the to the important part here. Can I ask, can I, before section. we go there, yes. can I have a question of, of you and Craig? Um, so the Bremen budget is really made up of three pieces. It has the AOS piece, has the GSB piece, and it has the Lincoln Academy piece, correct? Yes. Okay. So what is this, what are these lines 25 and 26? Um, that is- Why isn't that sort of like part of the AOS budget and why is it part of the Bremen budget? It is part of the AOS budget. When we do the AOS budget, we put all of those costs together, the budget gets approved and then with the cost sharing formula, it gets billed out through here. Um, so this is your portion of the AOS budget that you'll be paying in. That's our entire portion of the AOS budget? Those two lines plus line 19 and line 12. Okay. Yes, that's your entire portion of the mm -hmm. AOS budget. Um, and this includes Lincoln Academy because the AOS budget is the secondary budget because it's not just Lincoln Academy. It's... North Yarmouth Academy. North right. Yes. Perfect. I should, um, Matthew, I guess just to clarify, if I want to get into the weeds here, this is your secondary portion of the AOS budget. Great okay. Salt Bay has a portion as well, okay. which then of course gets cost shared out to the three towns as well. Okay. So you will have another piece through the Great Salt Bay budget. Okay. I'm just trying to get yeah. all. <laughs> 
stream. I was watching and learning as I was doing all of these budgets, thinking about Great South Bays and then each of the three towns, trying to make sure you weren't double charged anywhere right. for mm -hmm. things. You know, what is the K-8 share? What's the 9-12 share? And where does each one show up? So this is the 9-12 portion okay. of the AOS budget. Okay. All right. So you want to go back to line two now, I think. Yes. Let's go to those. So according to the audit, and I did get in touch with the brewers and make sure that I was reading everything absolutely correctly, your unassigned fund balance is $78,495.18. So you as a committee can decide if you want to put that into a reserve account, if you want to do a fund balance forward to offset some of the um, local appropriation that is in this budget. The law of the statute says that you can't leave more than 3% of your budget as an unassigned balance. That for you, based off your FY20 budget, is $16,886.53. So you have to do something with $61,608.65, and you can do something up to 78495 dollars that's your window to, to work with. All right. And so by the way, I haven't memorized those. They're on this yeah. page. <laughs> I was impressed. I know. I had all of my notes right in front of me ready so I could rattle that off. Do you mind if I start with discussing it? I think that's great. <laughs> um, you know, this has been a really sticky issue in the past. But I also look at the amount of resources we have, which we didn't have like four years ago or five years ago. I mean, we had to go back to the town for like $12,000 just to cover our budget because of increased students. And now um, when I'm looking at it, we have you know over 78,000 of unallocated funds. And we also have a $36,000 contingency fund for any move-in students. And on top of that, the town has a $70,000 account to cover education expenses. So that's, that's a lot of money mm -hmm. for our small town. So can I just ask a question, Sharon, where you get that 70,000 from the town? Because I was looking at the town report today mm -hmm. and all I saw was 10,000 moved into it last year for Right, I, I got it from my notes last year on the budgets, the proposed budget for last year. And um, I know that uh, Hank has put 10,000 in every year, but what I wrote down was that there's 70,000 for a contingency fund controlled by the selectmen. So I, I think that they do, and I know it was substantial. I don't know if you remember, Krista, what it, anything about that. Yeah, I remember it was similar enough to what we also had kind of coming through. Yeah, that, that high number of unexpended, which is why Hank was kind of like, oh, you've been hanging out, you've been overcharging us or, or yeah. kind of used that um, term. But uh, understandably, cause just because it was like we were duplicating efforts. On the other hand, um, the second, you know, the budget, the education budget is two thirds, at least of every taxpayer's taxes in Bremen um, and being able to have a large reserve is a uh, real insurance against just future volatility. Um, so it may look large, but it's still even that total amount of money is half of one year or something. So when you think of the next few years and how things might hit, um, you know, I'd be curious to see how the, maybe it is a discussion worth, worth having with our select board, but um, to, to Matthew's question and, and Lindsay's comment about the families moving in, it is, yeah, it's people like, people like me having babies or Brian Withers with kids who aren't in school yet, um, but will be very soon. Um, there's a lot of, of, uh, younger kids, you know, who are going to be enrolled in school in, in just a few years. So, um, yeah, I don't have a straight answer, but I do know that, yeah, the, the, education reserve fund that the select board controls has a significant amount. I think 70 something sounds right. Um, and it's just a question of, uh, you know, can this help make some other part of 
can can the unexpected unexpended funds in this out of this year's audit help make some other part of Bremen's town budget, um, you know, less less of a blow. I think it's just a question of do we are we good like to send money out of education if that's a request if it's not a need at this point. I don't think you know there's much wrong with having the reserve other than that legal aspect that you're only allowed to at least in certain places only have a certain percentage of um, reserve funds. It may help you in your discussion to know as I look at Great Salt Bays and they're not far enough in the process to have definite numbers, but in Great Salt Bay, the required local share for Bremen is up 95,000 this year. Um, hopefully the local additional will go down and help offset that, but their state, their state subsidy is up, but their costs of course will go up and the number of students you had was increased. So your share is up from them. Uh, so I do know that your required local is up 95,000 from last year. So I do expect your K-8 costs to go well, that's, that's good to know. Yeah. I mean, so, try to be prepared with all the different yeah. <laughs> moving pieces. So, so what I've, what I hear you saying then is we have to, we have to take 62,000 yeah. out of this excess yes. and we could apply it to this budget to lower this, or we could move it toward the GSB budget potentially. Well, I think the town would have to do that probably. Yes. Yes, mm -hmm. or if you move it as a, if you use it here as a fund balance forward, in the long run, when it all shakes out with final numbers, it would help offset that Great Salt Bay increase because the 912 would be a larger decrease while the K8 increased. The numbers, when you put them together, would Absolutely. help offset. So Matthew and, and Sharon and Crystal, let me just throw in also, when we first started planning this meeting, we'd been kind of out of sync as far as the, the secondary meetings. And I had heard from some place that um, Hank and the select board are hoping to have the budget numbers by the end of February. So I pushed through thinking that we were looking at doing a proposal and a final vote today. When I look at what we did last year, this time last year, we were just approving a proposal you went back to the town and discussed it with them. And then we came back in April for the actual approval. And I'm, I wanna say, I think that that's probably a, a stronger path forward rather than approving a budget today. I would agree. Yeah, okay. it was valuable. It gives you an opportunity, gives well, you an opportunity to check on that 16 where they might want it to go or the conversation. Well, Krista raises a good point about, is it necessary I mean, what is the shape of the town budget? And I know the goal Hank has is to have a zero increase of taxes. So that's that, his license plate, isn't it? Yeah, it must be, <laughs> you know, or a bumper sticker at least. Yeah. So um, he's going to advocate for that. And I think this 95,000 is gonna throw him over the moon. I, I'm surprised it's such a big increase actually, just increase in students apparently. Is that right, Lindsay? Increase in your share. Yeah, the state formula changed for their ED 279 this year. Um, they, they, everybody anticipated that the subsidies would go down because they're based on number of students, which we have less students with COVID and expenditures, which have been off because of COVID. And they reworked parts of the formula. So many people got more money, uh, but with the expenses being redone, what they count and don't count, it also changed what allowable expenses there are. So Great Salt Bay subsidy is going up um, significantly as well from the state, but when they did the um, required, the required local portions, you have in FY20, you had 637,000 ballpark. In FY21, it dropped to 598. And now it's going back up to 693. So it had a drop and it's going back to where it was plus a little bit from those formulas. But yeah, that does, it feels significant for a town the size of Bremen too. Yeah, it does. <clears throat> so I'll Well, it's really pretty much the whole offset here, isn't it? It's about mm -hmm. just about matches. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It is. Yeah. Yeah. So I think emphasizing that, you know, to the select board and saying, you know, keeping these 
keeping these funds, allowing the one budget to offset the other, but um, feels like a good, good stable approach to us and yeah. not, um, if it's not needed, not pulling money out of the reserve accounts, knowing, yes, we have a lot of, um, of, of money currently in, in the education reserve account, but we also know that there are younger, younger families moving in and um, having that money for future years will, will benefit. So, yeah, I think just being able to bring them all the information with us having opinions or, you know, feelings about it, but not having made any formal decisions yet. And it seems to me absolutely that waiting till April would be fine um, because we don't do town meeting until, you know, summer now. Um, but yeah. yeah. And, I th and I think we'll be um, further along in terms of the GSB budget. And I would imagine they're gonna be asking you for that. It'd be much more comfortable to have those numbers in front of you. Mm -hmm. So Krista, are you open to the idea of using the unallocated funds to help balance off the increased GSB funds? Is that what I was just hearing you say or not? Um, I think I think so. However, it's the smoothest way to do that. I mean, if we, sometimes it's nice to not have the, you know, the sticker shock of this budget is 95,000 more than it was. But on the other hand, I kind of like, um, if we kept, which, which that would only happen if we, you know, took the money into the town and then put it back into the GSB, or I'm not sure, versus using it as a fund balance in the AOS. Mm -hmm. But I also like the idea of having that transparency and saying, yes, GSB is back up to mm -hmm. this amount, you know, not trying to hide that um, mm -hmm. through moving the money around. So just using, yes. using it as the fund, putting mm -hmm. it as a carry forward or whatever yeah. the right term is. Um, for the AOS budget, showing that go down significantly, but saying, you know, ultimately this is keeping our education yeah. um, costs fairly the same. All right, so and I got when, kicked off. What did yeah, I miss? I saw that. Welcome back. What did and I miss? There, when, when all oh, is said sorry. and done, when all is said and done, if you do that, then you're pretty flat between the two of them. And I think that's yeah. appreciated by the town. Mm -hmm. And keep in mind, I don't know the additional local for Great Salt Bay yet for Bremen. So I'm hoping that comes mm -hmm. in about flat, but we're, that's not a player yet in the discussion until Great Salt Bay meets, does their budget and decides about a fund balance forward. <laughs> yes, I agree with you, Krista, that they should know where the increase is and the decrease, and that should all be out there for the town to be able to understand what's happening with the funding. It also alerts them to the fact that there it is a thriving young community. And in fact, we need to be prepared to support more education in the town. So I think that's a, a good move to use these funds to um, decrease our budget and yet um, make sure that the other, they'll know that the GSB budget has gone up. I think the more transparency we have the more credibility and faith people have in us too, you yes. know, the more that we're explaining those pieces, um, the better people feel about it. Right. So I, I have to ask just because I have to ask, is there any line here that you think should be adjusted? I mean, you really don't have a lot of opportunity because you're really counting students or they're assessed from the AOS from the local agreement. I just want to make sure you're comfortable with those amounts that are on those lines. Lindsay did such a great job of explaining it. I mean, there's no argument Good. anymore. <laughs> Good, <thank you. laughs> Again, see, the more upfront you are and the more everybody yeah. knows, the easier the process is. And I'm still in favor of the three student contingency, um, you know, and one reason being because I think you said three students moved out this year or um, two moved out, yes. Two moved out. Um, Bremen has a lot of moving out and moving back in, um, especially with kids who go to live with another parent or another relative and mm -hmm. come back. And so whether or not that was the reason for these, um, there's there's the moving out and moving possibility of moving back mid-year. So, And the property it. market is hot. So, Well, and I think that's where we're going to hear from Hank. Hank is going to ask the question, perhaps, is three students enough this year, given the, the hot volatility in houses being turned over. But, you know, I guess historically three has worked for us. And the select board has the reserve account for that reason too. You know, that's like well, and separate. 
if we just use the 61,608 to reduce the budget, we still could keep 16,000 on a side. Right. We which still would. would also then give us four. Yes, right. that would cover another student. Yeah, or we could decrease that, not 16. What is it, 12 is tuition or is it? 11 something. 11.3 11, plus an insured value factor of about 680. So 12 is a really yeah. good budgeting number. Yeah, so 12. So we could even um, keep that on assigned as 12,000 mm -hmm. and it would be a fourth student and then um, use the rest to um, move into the revenue side. Lindsay, going back to fiscal year 21 and looking at private in-state, in you're overdrawn, but uh, you haven't touched the contingencies yet. So three. Right. So what happens is in the beginning of the year, the entire cost gets encumbered. But as students move in and out until the bills reach the point where you see the up and down, it doesn't show up in this budget very well. Um, encumbering okay. it is great for what you expect to spend, but throws that off a little. Uh, so okay. you've had where you've had two students move out. It appears that you're going to be over on that, but I don't think you will be. So so then going back to Krista's point, or maybe it was Matthew who said, Hank may ask if three contingencies are enough related to that is, did we need it this year as a as a point going forward? And it looks like you didn't need it this year. So as that of right now, it looks okay. like you don't, won't need it this year. No, I got you. Okay. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Lindsay, this looks really good. I think I, Thank you. You know, I appreciate it and I hope they will too. Mm -hmm. So it seems to me like the next thing would be for me to reach out to the selectmen and see if we can get on their agenda. Um, Krista, should we aim for the first or the third Thursday next month? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> and I wonder, and probably having something, or I'm just thinking, um, you know, if there's something written that we want to send them ahead of time or, or even just the budget, um, with any notes of like the highlights that we want to touch. Um, I don't know if that would be helpful coming from, I don't want to put it on Lindsay necessarily, but helpful for coming from the, the AOS or, um, but you both I'm sure took much better notes than me today. I can't make decisions based on me right now though. <laughs> well, I think I would, I would push for the end of March then just so that I would too. There's a good, a better chance, a gooder chance. Especially the GSB yeah. info too, having yes. having more info from GSB as well as um, that does give us time to um, ask Kelly or um, Melanie at the town office about um, specific info on families moving in um, and just, or to keep, to, to really help us um, because people who are even doing building permits right now um, there, I know that there's a, you know, somebody moving in on Fogler, somebody moving in on, um, McCarty, like, uh, knowing if they have kids in school, um, as well, like I, uh, would give us a little more time to just ask, um, those folks, like if right. they have any inf updated information on the numbers, cause I can see. Yeah, are they getting... building a five bedroom or a two bedroom? Yeah. <laughs> right. right. <laughs> <laughs> So Matthew, then we come back together, I would think in April rather than May. Okay. Sometime around the middle of April, just, okay. just before vacation. That sounds good, better than, yeah. Okay. And I think, it, I think it'd be more helpful for the town to do it earlier. Okay. So we'll plan on mid-April. Okay. And we'll get the town's input um, the end of the third, probably be the third Thursday in March at 5.30. Um, Lindsay, I don't know if you want to be a fly on the wall, if you'd rather not be, um, we can certainly if you, make. If it helps you to have me there in case they throw out a question and you're trying to remember back, I, I don't mind. Um, I don't, I won't speak unless I'm asked because <laughs> I'm not a resident of the town, but, um, I can, I can be available. It wouldn't hurt. <laughs> and Thursdays are easy. I don't usually have meetings on Thursdays. Our our other meetings tend to be Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. <laughs> so okay. All right. Are they remote? Are the selectmen meetings remote? Yes. Right now. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Though Hank would like them not to be. <laughs> <laughs> oh well. Um, so okay, I guess we've had a good first conversation on the budget. We feel good about it. 
and um, we'll move it forward. Good. Great. Uh, so I guess that brings us then to anything else on the budget? I think you're good. All right, then this should bring us to um, Sharon and GSB. Um, I'll be real quick, but it seemed like in the past, it was helpful for the Krista and Matthew, both of you to hear a little bit about GSB well, um, because from the board meetings. Uh, there has just in terms of numbers, um, the January numbers total were 377 and to, uh, February is 380. Uh, they're moving from 55 virtual academy kids to 52. So gradually parents are moving their students back in. Also, some of them have moved them to private schools. There's also some homeschooling that's gone on. This number is um, quite a bit smaller than the previous year, but there are a variety of factors around that as to why it's different. Um, I think, you know, COVID controls a lot of it. Uh, the other thing that I've been impressed about is how well the school has been able to use the COVID money for infrastructure. And they have done uh, air filtration systems and they continue to do that but also faucets and toilets and flooring and all of those things have been done before the end of the year. And since now they can spend money and please help me, Lindsay, if I end up messing up on this, but um, if the, uh, they can continue spending money now after January. So they're doing plumbing repairs and drinking fountains and, and things like that. So it's been quite a, uh, for the building, which was built, I think, in the 90, something like 90 or 91, I'm not sure which. But anyway, um, it has upgraded <clears throat> those systems that are original. And it's been a real advantage to the school. Uh, there's a yurt that was given by the DRA to the school. It's been a long time in getting the pad, getting it processed, getting it ready to be used by students. It's now wired. It's going to be plumbed shortly, and it will be used by students in the short, shortly rather than in the long term, which is pretty exciting because this has been almost like a two year project, I think. Um, I'm on the policy committee and we've looked a lot at attendance and truancy because with virtual education or remote education, it has been a real issue in terms of how to, first of all, define attendance, how to um, hold students accountable, parents accountable. Um, we're in the process of a first read with attendance policies and truancy policies. So we hope we have something. And also the student handbook was, has been um, updated a little bit to handle some of the new issues around um, attendance. It takes a lot of effort on the part of the staff to keep on top of who's attending remotely. A lot of phone calls, a lot of um, personal contact. Sometimes that works, sometimes it doesn't. Uh, my concern as an educator is just how much students are gonna be losing over this next year in terms of being out of school mentally, physically, and uh, then if they are doing remote, how they may not be actually accessing their education. So we'll be probably needing to look at that more next year. Um, another po couple policies are gifts because we've received some very nice gifts from the community. And then uh, public complaints is something we've dealt with in the past and haven't brought to the final uh, policy. So we're having a meeting today to work on some of that and um, we're moving forward. Making a lot of progress on policy under Sharon's direction. I mean, well, really Sharon, it's, it's impressive what we've done. Well, thanks, I, I'm embarrassed. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's a, that's okay. I think we've done more in the last six months than we did in my first three years. <laughs> well, you've been supportive of it. That's what's well, happening. You're well, out there you. giving me the policies. We're just put, making up agendas and working on them. So that's yeah, all. I'm good. So it Sharon, yes. can, you, can you broadly characterize, if, if possible, sort of the tone and feeling of, you know, the parents, the faculty, the administrator? I mean, how are, how are people handling this year? You know, I haven't been in the school since the fall. Okay. Um, the one thing I, I, I meant, was going to mention is that in terms of safety, there have been uh, a few incidents of 
um, positive either students or staff in the school. However, there's been no secondary infections from those incidents. And I think that's a real um, coup for the school that there hasn't been any spreading of the disease or of the virus, even though there have been a few small you know, upticks. Um, I, my feeling is that, I mean, I had this feeling in the fall and I have no reason to think it isn't the same, but teachers were very glad to be back in the schools. The students were extremely glad to be back in the schools. They have uh, embraced the restrictions uh, with no problem as kids do. I mean, they just sort of roll with, okay, wear a mask, take it off, eat, put it back on again, you know, dump the things in the garbage. It, the school is extremely well organized right now. And I think that's what has allowed it to function so well. I mean, mm -hmm. the, you know, just the hallways, the classrooms and all of that. Um, they may encounter problems if everybody decided to leave virtual academy, they would have too many students for the um, square footage. Mm -hmm. So that could cause a problem. Um, but I mean, I haven't heard any rumblings and Craig, you probably are around more than I am and I don't, you could answer better than I could. I think it's overwhelmingly positive. There were some hiccups with the remote learning. Some people are not happy with how that was rolled out, but I think that, you know, we have to look at, we went from something we didn't know anything about to, to full implementation for some families. Um, I agree with Sharon about the organization. I mean, they've done, they've been masterful. Um, it's, it's, it's an interesting school. I mean, I don't hear a lot, but I do know that, you know, almost a hundred percent of your staff are back on site teaching every day. They did not come to us with grievances and memorandums of agreement uh, about demands as they've done in other districts. I think that um, 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 demonstrates a level of trust in the administration and, and in the re return planning. I think things are going pretty well. You won't hear that from everyone, Matthew, but I think they're going very well as they are around the AOS. Good. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to let Lindsay go because I know she's got a kid who wants to go to a basketball game hanging out behind her somewhere, right? <laughs> Actually, she just left. Um, oh, I sent did she? you a message. Yeah. So my husband finished work a few minutes ago. Oh, okay. He just showed up in the parking lot to take her to the high school. So I oh, don't okay. have to. All right. Well, I didn't want you having to worry about getting there. <laughs> You know what it's like trying to manage kids in yes, different directions. Yeah. Krista, you'll find out. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we've all done that. <laughs> but thank you. So anyway, I'm you're, fine. You're certainly welcome. Right. Yeah. Yeah, I have been uh, very happy on reflection after hearing also nationally how teachers have been so unhappy to come back to school. And there was a survey early in, in well, at end of the summer. And there were t teachers who weren't comfortable going back to school. But for whatever reason, they have come back to school and they are, the school is functioning well from what I nice. can see. So. That's very good to hear. Good and, to hear. Um, Sharon, you mentioned the year, I just want to mention you also have a greenhouse that's um, going to go in. It was a donation from the DRA. It's been a one step forward, one step back kind of situation, but the initial um, site work is done and that should be completed later in the spring. And that, that's another exciting thing. Um, an important piece is to define the curriculum that will be used there. But um, the, the greenhouse is a nice addition for some of the things that are um, important to, to the GSB community. Wonderful. Yeah. All right, is there anything else? Not for me, thank you, Matthew. Well, Lindsay, no Aaron, one there from the public? No comment from the public. Right. Aaron, I'll see you at four. Right. Okay. All right. Thank, well, Matthew, so thank you. Meeting's adjourned at 248. Thank, thank you, everybody.